Okay, so I've been wanting to make this video for quite some time now, but I just never got to it. Um, also, I was not sure of exactly how to approach this video, but just like you, I watch YouTube videos and I came across a couple of videos and I've been seeing the trend of people criticizing the formula of PlayStation games in the, in the current years. Um, now we all know PlayStation games, PlayStation games are beloved games. They are these blockbuster cinematic experiences. And I say experiences because they are more of an experience than a game. And there's nothing wrong with that. They are excellent. They are great linear stories that are amazing. That's why I say that they are experiences because you'd be a fool not to experience God of War to experience Ghost of Tsushima and all these other excellent games, Spider-Man as well. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I came across two particular videos that I think is of interest and that is the one of David Jaffe where he speaks about Spider-Man 2 and he's very critical as to as posing the question of is the the PlayStation formula that is after all successful. We know Spider-Man 2's um, reviews are out and the game is sitting at Universal Acclaim 91. Obviously, whoever thought this game was going to flop. Um, are you are you serious? <laughs> but the consensus around the game is that there's more of Spider-Man. It's more of the same. There's not much innovation. They've innovated with it. It's like with regards to graphical performance and things like that which is great the game looks amazing um, it still plays the same and that's why many reviews that I've watched so far says that if Spider-Man 2 is the, your, your jump on point for Insomniac Spider-Man it's going to amaze you and it's going to blow you away and I have no doubt about that but someone who has played the first one and I love the first one as well as Miles Morales which I still think is an expansion to the first Spider-Man I was wowed by that game and what the consensus is is that when you go into part two and, you're, and you've already played the first one um, you won't be wowed and amazed because it's something familiar and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that i'm excited for spider-man 2 i think that spider-man 2 is the reason why you should buy a playstation 5 if you want to play the game um but the purpose of this video is basically to just ask the question do you think as a gamer do you think that the playstation formula that we know and love is becoming stale do you think that do you think that uh playstation needs to innovate the the style somehow because at the end of the day there are amazing experiences these games are amazing experiences but when it comes to the gaming elements of the game of what makes a game a game it does seem to be lacking because we know that PlayStation games are filled with flashy cinematic set pieces, filled with QTEs. We are got us. We base. We most of the time you're sitting there waiting to to press a particular button, you know. And I mean that, like I said, it's great the the story, you know, to to be invested in the story, and it, 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 it's a great thing. I love it, but. After watching these videos, it made me think more critically about the formula that PlayStation has. Uh, so let's get into the video, man, before I, I take up too much time talking about um, <laughs> the purpose of the video. So let's do that. I'm so I'm going to leave a link to these two videos in the description. Go ahead and check them out. If you don't know David Jaffe, he's the guy that um, created the first God of War. The, you know, the OG God of War. It's going to be critical of playstation in this video i don't hate playstation and i don't hate sony and Same i yeah. certainly don't hate spider-man my bit where he is back there and spider woman my favorite and i loved the new insomniac trailer but in showing it i think it shines a light on where playstation first party is incredibly vulnerable it's hard to see it because they're the top of the food chain right now yeah. And it's hard to see it because Spider-Man 2 is probably going to sell bucket loads. I'm not Definitely. asking you to take it on faith. And I'm not asking you to... Yeah. Um, 
yeah, that's I completely agree with what he's saying. Insomniac is on top of the food chain right now. PlayStation is on top of the food chain, right? Whether or not you love them because of console warding or whatever. PlayStation is at the top. They've proven that single player games are not dead. That um, they still can lead the front in, in the gaming industry with single player games. And not everything needs to be multiplayer. And that's why I, I praise Sony. Sony. They've, they, they've proven that time and time again. But I feel like a lot of people have, they still have the rose glasses on. They're not able to look at these things critically because they have their rose glasses on you know and when a brand like playstation or any brand for that matter has built up um a reputation of good faith a lot of people um they assign good things with that brand and playstation has done that throughout the years um, not every game they've launched is a banger not everybody um i mean look at forbidden west a lot of people don't like that game then you look at ghost of Tsushima, which I haven't played it, but from the streams and that I've watched, it looks like a really, really great game, but it's, it's not even sitting at a 90 or that, you know, so there's a lot of people that are still, that are still blinded because they have the rose glasses on and they're not able to look at these things more critically. But yeah, let's, let's get on with the video. <laughs> Agree with me. I'm just asking you to enter into this conversation with me with an open mind because as someone who loves the medium i think this is worth talking about so the trailer was great but yeah too and the same goes for this video i'm not bashing on playstation or anything like that spider-man i love spider-man go look at my channel i streamed spider-man the dlcs i streamed miles morales I love the Spider-Man Insomniac, and, and I'm not someone who's a Spider-Man fan, but when I played the 2018 Spider-Man, man, on the first on the PS4, it made me fall in love with the character because I'm more of a DC Comics kind of guy. But Insomniac guys really made me love Spider-Man, the character. So, yeah. But the trailer shows that Sony is kind of stuck in the gear they've been in for a long time. If you remember the Uncharted 4 trailer with nathan drake dragging behind the convoy and everybody lost their minds rightly so one of the it best games with the exception of you know a game for me. here and there like a returnal or an mlb this bread and butter formula formula is getting stale and and maybe it's because we have had a year of such top tier game design superstars if you look at tears of the kingdom if you look at Baldur's gate 3 and yes, if you look at Starfield, Starfield yeah. for all of its <laughs> issues that a lot of you guys watching this may have. Yeah, uh, a lot of guys is going to have, and a lot of people have issues with Starfield. But the same criticism that they gave Starfield and Bethesda for not changing the formula and sticking to it, especially me, I said that they that they did not innovate the form formula. They innovated things like that, like the the graphical settings, the combat. They've refined the formula, but they haven't really innovated it that much. Um. A lot of people were giving Starfield that much hate, um, but they still got the rose glasses on when it comes to PlayStation. And I think it's because of that that good faith that the PlayStation brand has built over the years. It's understandable, but at the same time, you got you have to remove those rose glasses and actually have an open mind to talk about these things. Still does a handful of really bold, interesting things when it comes to narrative, branching, storytelling, things like that. And then last year, of course, we had Elden Ring. So when your palate has gotten used to those flavors and, and, and your palate has kind of matured and then you see something like this, you cannot help but love the presentation. But mm. abstractly, if you look at it at a game level, it's not really asking you to do all that much more. That's what I see that, at the player agency way. Like even this scene here, which is, you know, if this was a movie, we'd be losing our shit because yeah. as somebody watching this scene, you're like, holy cow. Holy that's shit. Cool exactly. That's, that's awesome. awesome. Look at that. <laughs> it's like, shit, that's a neat concept. That's what I say. And I know a lot of people will agree as well. PlayStation games are cinematic experiences. They are flashy, but they are filled with so many QTE. I, like, I mean, look at this right here. What is this, basically? It's a 
QTE and sequence again. I don't know how your brain works, but when I'm playing these sequences, I don't have the mental bandwidth to really appreciate it in the way that I am when I'm watching the sequences. So when I'm playing it at an abstract Explosive level, metal. I'm just like, push the stick left. It's like Crazy Climber, right? Push left, dodge a thing falling. Push right, dodge a thing falling. When there's an opening, do my attack. Up, oh, spider sense, push down. Then left, there's a thing falling. You know, this game is Listen. amazing at a presentation level, but at a gameplay level, we've done it. And it seems like yeah. so much of Sony's bread and butter formula is about presenting the game as this amazing movie. And I that, love it. That's I get what they it. do. It's a great subgenre. They should never stop making games like that. But there's a point where I think you start to see the lack of innovation in the actual part of the game that matters most to to most people even though they may not know Damn, why did I, I did, activity i look at this game and i say how did i miss this trailer is this a trailer that shit how did i miss this trailer damn it this looks so good i'm so glad they brought lizard into the the fold man i will definitely get it day one i am excited i cannot wait i would be stunned if after the uh initial excitement i finished this game not because i don't love it or I don't appreciate it, but because after about five or six hours, I get the sense I'm like, okay, I get it. Let me move on. I haven't felt that way with Tears, Elden, Baldur's Gate, Starfield. All of those four games have me continuing to come back to them because they're not always, but it seems so far anyway that there is always something new to delight me and surprise me. I don't get the sense of that in a lot of the Sony games. And this could just be my brain. You guys could be like, yeah, that's great for your gamer brain, Jaffe, but we love this. Who are you to say uh, that just because your brain feels that way, that you're ahead <laughs> of the curve? Because that's what I think. I think in the same way that you have people that are movie snobs, aficionados, whatever you want to call them, same with music, whatever. They're so deep into it as an art form and it's not just the surface enjoyment for them, that they're able to recognize when they're getting tired of the same old thing more often than others who are just sort of cursory. Yeah, if, but a perfect example would be Marvel. The Marvel movies, the MCU. When Marvel still started out, everyone was on the hype train, and it did, uh, it did really well. But look at the state of Marvel right now, that even the... The plans with the new Avengers, the things that it seems like it's going to be cancelled or something because it's doing so poorly because it's more about um, quantity than quality. Now, when it comes to PlayStation games, you're going to get quality. And I've always seen that with these games. It's always polished games at leasing. Um, but like I said... Everyone's experience can be different when, when a particular game launches. But from what I've played of PlayStation games, it's always been polished games on day one. Let me know if that's not the case. I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Engaged. But eventually, they end up being right. Pop music does change. We're sick of this. We want this. We're sick of these kind of movies. We want these kind of movies. So maybe it's that. Or maybe I'm just a minority and this is this bread and butter is bread and butter and it works and people love it. For me, I would be worried if I saw Baldur's and Tears and all these games this year and a couple last year and go, is this formula still fresh enough to, to really be our core template for game making? Look, Baldur's Gate pushed the envelope. There's no doubt about it. But a lot of people are not... They can't get into Baldur's because of... It's a tactical... I don't know. It's like a tabletop tactical sort of game you know um turn-based combat and a lot of people can't get into that although it's not hard to get into because i also was never into those games but i got into it and i love Baldur's gate 3 but Baldur's gate 3 pushed the envelope for a double a studio to put out such level of quality that they they just push narrative gameplay all that things they just pushed it to a to a whole nother level and they set the standard um so yeah, once you've played Baldur's Gate 3, and, and, and look, I know a lot of people think that Spider-Man 2 is the game of the year, but <laughs> it probably will be nominated as one of the game of the years, without a doubt. Um, but yeah, the just the levels that Baldur's Gate 3 pushed gaming this year, I think it, it will go to Baldur's Gate 3. Um, but hey, anything can happen. <laughs> anything can happen. And it might be, 
but don't point to the sales because this thing's going to sell great. Huge. Yeah, that's definitely. That doesn't mean we're not Spider-Man. seeing the beginnings of the fatigue setting in of this kind of game. And I wonder if you're at Sony, are you? And you have to be. You can't be Corey Barlog uh, working on his new game as smart as Corey is and going, no, no, no it's same as it ever was. Kind of looks like, all right, push up, hit triangle and square, boom, I'm going to do this cool flary move and that's cool. <laughs> but i've done it yeah, over and over and over in these games i mean ask yourself this if they announce next week ragnarok 2 which won't be ragnarok 2 it's got a war in egypt and it's basically the same thing that we had in 2018's got a war and 2022's got a war ragnarok yeah and that it looks better than any playstation game ever controls great the fighting combat is great built but it's still the same ragnarok, but it's the same kind of game it's the yeah. same thing that we've done in ragnarok similar yeah. to horizon i get what he's saying I get, really I get after finishing forbidden west are you really after finishing ragnarok going i cannot wait to do this to do that again <laughs> maybe not. i'm not i need them to do something better i don't know to engage for this stuff again now again i get it Okay, now with that being said, let's keep in mind what we just watched here, what we heard here. Let's go to the next video. All right, um, this video is by a guy named Clint. Um, so I'm going to leave the link in here as well. But he had some interesting things to say here. I don't agree with all of them, but he had some in very interesting things to say here. And why gamers nowadays like the stuff they like. Gaming used to be a hobby, and now it's some kind of lifestyle. People invest their egos deep into this shit. Oh, oh. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Oh. They brag yeah. about beating some tough boss in a game that's way too difficult to be fun. They wax poetic about <laughs> the complexities of a story in a barely playable game in which all you really do is trigger cutscenes. And they engage in this weird console versus console versus PC yeah. versus console yeah. warfare where the mm -hmm. brand you're so loyal to only measures that loyalty in the amount of money you give them. And that's fine, I guess. Not everything requires my approval to be the way it is. You like what you like, and I'll do me. But there's a degree to which the tastes of other gamers is negatively affecting the stuff I like. So here yeah. I am to that, use the internet for what that is to do. That's what I've said in one of my previous videos, especially regarding Starfield, is that we as gamers, we too spoiled and we keep on projecting our likes from other games onto, you know, other games that that's doing something different. We want all our games to have the same flavor, to have the same taste, you know, to play the same, to look the same. Um, but where's the diversity and creativity in that? So we're projecting our likes from one game onto another game and when that game doesn't meet that expectations we are ruining that game for other people that is that that's just my thoughts on that but it's for airing out grievances 90 percent of the <laughs> yeah that's people complaining about not having their preferences catered to oh shit you oh man do just hit it on the head there the nail on the head the, exactly exactly could i be any different but Uncharted 2 is a deep. damn near perfectly paced game with just the right balance of action, platforming, yes. and the puzzles. best one in the and series. Most important to this video, the cutscenes don't get in the way of the gameplay. Hey Drake, you want to rob a museum? Gameplay in a museum. Hey Drake, the guy who betrayed you, he's in the jungles of Borneo. Gameplay in the jungles of Borneo. Hey Drake, they took Chloe to the train. Gameplay on a train. Each cutscene perfectly sets up the next gameplay yeah. sequence and never lasts too long. Hey Mario, your princess is in another castle. Gameplay in another castle. That's all you need. Games don't mm -hmm. need to have good stories to be good games. But because gamers nowadays want games to be movies and developers like to think of themselves uh, as see. tours, we end up... Again. You see? Again. That, that, and that's what I said previously. PlayStation games are movies. They are, they are cinematic experiences to the point that, the, that it, it lost the, uh, the purpose of being a game. Now, is that a bad thing? Yeah, yes and no. Yes and no. Let me know your thoughts on that. ...with games that have no real replay value, like The Last of Us, and disappointing bullshit like Uncharted 4. Yes, Uncharted 4... Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Last of Us, for me, is one of my all-time favorites. Um, and Uncharted 4, but... Uh, okay, I guess... Uh, ...extremely disappointing. Twice as long as any of the previous games, yet less action. Too much walking around, doing nothing... While the characters talk to each other. Too oh, shit. There should have just been cutscenes. Like the Nadine oh, fight. Shit. These sequences are fucking awful. Uncharted 3 introduced a more robust melee combat system that did take some getting used to, but it was fun once you did. And it was completely abandoned by this game. And now we're forced to play these bullshit fight sequences as yep. if with both hands tied behind our backs. Just make it a cutscene. 
exactly that is what i'm talking about it, it has too much of playstation games have too much of this qte um cinematic uh scenes where you just uh, set pieces where you're just sitting there waiting to push a button and it's correct that this scene right here could have been a cutscene or they could have just given you full control where you're actually fighting but no it, 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 it wasn't that you were sitting with the controller in your hand and i, and I actually remember this you're sitting in the controller there and waiting to press a button yeah i don't know how long this sequence was probably only about five minutes but it felt like forever i understand the devs want us to know that nadine is a badass okay just have Nadine whoop Nate's ass in yeah. a 30 second cutscene. <laughs> We'd understand. Exactly. Why force us to play these unplayable fight scenes? And by the way, I don't care about a woman being able to beat up a man. A sufficiently well trained woman could probably whoop my ass. I don't care about that. <laughs> I only care about being forced into playing an unskippable, glorified cutscene. Uncharted is notorious for its breakaway platforms, but the Tau Collapse sequence takes this to a whole new level. Too much of this is unplayable. Yes. Walk 10 feet, many cutscenes. Holy five shit. feet, mini cutscene. And then... Yo, listen. Uncharted 4 is one of my all-time favorite games. But when I look at what he's saying, right, it, it, it makes me... It, you know, because I'm looking at this with an open mind. It makes me think more critically of the game. And when I think back of my time playing this game, man, most of the, most of everything happening was was you not playing. It was you sitting there with the controller and watching a film. And that... To me is what plagues playstation games um it's too much of that qte cinematic flashy things that the, the the games keep on throwing at you it's awesome yes without a doubt it's awesome don't get me wrong it, it's awesome but as a game it, it, it takes you out of it because you're more invested in the the scene instead of invested as a gamer playing you know having control of the character having control of the game feeling in control of the game because you're playing just like a cutscene, like you said, a glorified cutscene. Fucking Nadine again. Uncharted 2 had big action <laughs> set pieces like this, but they were fully playable. Like the sequence with the tank in Tenzin Village. The problem is that Uncharted 4 is a game made to tell a story and not just be a good game. I blame The Last of Us. I saw a review of Uncharted 4 where the guy said, This game doesn't have much action, but that's okay. I don't like the shooting in the Uncharted games. I play the Uncharted games for the story, and I get my shooter fix elsewhere. This well, makes that's, uh, absolutely no sense. Un that, that makes absolutely no sense. Absolutely no sense. Uncharted is a shooter, action-adventure game franchise. If the exactly. shooting, actioning, and adventuring in the game is not good, then the exactly. game is not good. How can you say, if this game is bad, it's okay because other games exist? That doesn't make any sense. No one would say that, like, it's okay that this movie is bad because other movies exist. I bet if you asked him exactly. what games he's talking about, <laughs> he would probably list a bunch of first-person shooters. Yeah, this Call of Duty and... Uncharted is a third-person game. Yes, it, it's a yes. completely different type of game. And it might be okay for you to get your shooter fix elsewhere, but I get my action fix from games like Uncharted 2. I yes, get mine. Cause... I prefer third-person. Yes, exactly. I same there. I prefer third-person shooters. That is what I started on. I... I couldn't get into first-person shooters that much at first because um, the third-person view was just more engaging for me. It was more immersive than the first-person, but I do love first-person games right now, so FPS games, so yeah. What's going on? Games. games. Uncharted 2, for me, is better than any first-person game I've ever played, whether it be a Far Cry or a Call of Duty or whatever. I feel like third-person games allow for more variety in gameplay. You can do shooting just as good as any first-person game, plus better melee and platforming. I remember climbing the towers in Far Cry 3. I played the demo of Mirror's Edge. I was not impressed. And I hate this camera angle. I don't know what it's called. It's like the rule of thirds angle, where the characters are nah, in from I, the side of the screen. I think, that, the I think that's also. awesome. Whatever it's called, I hate it. It's like a compromise between first-person and third-person. It's the next-gen. It's the next-gen camera. <laughs> Remember when The Witcher did it as next gen update and employed the same camera? I call it the next gen camera. That, that is what they. But it just looks like a one's using it nowadays. Dude standing in the way. As I said, I prefer third person games. Seeing the full character makes for better readability. You can have a more agile character, and you can do shooting and parkour makes and sense. melee combat better because it's more readable. This angle just makes gameplay stiff and the character less maneuverable. And that might work for games with slower moving enemies like 
Resident Evil 4, or the 2 and 3 remake, and, and The Last of Us. But with faster paced games, no thank you. I didn't like it here, I didn't like it in Watch Dogs 1, and I especially didn't like it in the Amazing Spider-Man games. It's like the cameraman, you're trying to put the camera up Spider-Man's ass. <laughs> the only game where it kind of worked was Days Gone. Oh, awesome. And that's it's because funny the shit. enemies run straight at you. So yeah, I gotta give this a like. It's a funny shit. Other than that, it just, it's terrible. Which leads me to God of War 20. Exactly. What is this thing? No. 18 and Ragnarok. The rehabilitation of Kratos from a god of selfish, childish rage to grandfather of beautiful mixed race babies is a fine story to tell, but the gameplay in these two games pales in comparison to the previous games in the franchise. And the camera Ooh. is the main problem. Combat, platforming, puzzle solving, and boss fights were all better in the previous games because the camera's position allowed them to be. Here, the Ooh, really? Ooh. Let me know in the comments down below, do you agree with that? I found the combat very challenging in God of War 2018, and I, I haven't played Ragnarok yet. I don't have a PS5, but I played God of War 2018 on PC and PS4. It was challenging, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. At the, the camera angle makes it more stiff and, 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 and more difficult, whereas if it was full third-person uh, mode, it would feel more fluid, you know, the gameplay and, and the boss fights. Let me know down below. Do you agree with this? Do you th do you think he's got a point here? Let me know in the comments down below. The camera makes gameplay stiff and boring, and the combat, whether it's a regular, I don't think it was boring. Boss, is virtually the same every time. Let's look at the Stranger fight, right? From 2018, a God of War. This is IGN's video on it. It's 14 minutes long. Of this entire video, very little of it is actual gameplay. It's just flashiness. What's so epic about this fight? Gamers nowadays are like cats being distracted by some shiny cutscene <laughs> dangling in front of you. That's what I said. That's what I said in the beginning of the video. And that's what I said, um, that why people are also finding games like Starfield boring, because it's not flashy, it's not throwing this continuous flashy cinematic things in your face that is like, it just wows you, you know? It's, it's not like that. And that's why a lot of people finding... Um, Games like Starfield boring because, again, like I said, they're projecting their likes from games like these, God of War, Last of War, all that. They want the games to be that cinematic experiences, but not every game can look and feel the same, play the same. Where does diversity and creativity then go in gaming? Because then every game wouldn't be vanilla because it would be the same thing over and over again. Stopping you from seeing how mundane the combat is. He attacks, you block. And then you mash one of the attack buttons until he attacks again, which you block. And then you mash a button and repeat, repeat, repeat. And some of you might be thinking, that's just video games, man. You're, you're describing video games. No, boss fights themselves used to be exciting. And bosses themselves used to require some kind of special approach. But fighting this guy is like fighting any other dude. Just with a bunch of cutscenes spliced in, tricking you into thinking more is happening. What? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I should remember this. We haven't touched the controller for 45 minutes. <laughs> Yo, I remember this clip and I thought it was funny, yeah, but... This video is 14 minutes long, and it starts out already a few minutes deep into a cutscene. From the beginning of this video to this point right here, this is all cutscene. And that's fine, I guess, right? Video games gotta have cutscene. A pre-fight cutscene is okay. Here's the problem. Over the rest of this video, only this much is actual gameplay. What? What the fuck? Which, as I said is mundane as hell. Wow. The rest you just watch. Smacking Balder with the log, Holy cutscene. Shit, really? Ramming Balder with the log through the cliff, cutscene. All this fisticuffs right here, cutscene. Dropping that big ass stone in him, it's all cutscene. And before oh, you say anything gosh. about Sigrun, all her moves are just cobbled together from other Valkyries. I'm not saying these two God of War games aren't good, just that the other ones were better. All the God of War games prior to okay. 2018 are better than 2018 and Ragnarok. That's one, two, three, the PSP games, and yes, okay. even Ascension. God of War Ascension, the story of that game is trash, right? It's a prequel, <laughs> yeah, so, and Kratos so, so has trash. lost his memory, and at the end of the game, he gets so, it back. So stupid. And what he learns, so what he rediscovers, is the something story. that we, the audience, already, already knew. knew. The entire exactly. point of a prequel is to fill out some aspect of backstory to make the audience yep. better understand the character's motivation. Exactly. This game fails at that. And because the story is so bad... So look at the boss fight here. Yeah. You see how this is playing out? You see how that is playing out, and that's what he's talking about. We, these boss fights here were were more entertaining, you know, um, 
because you had this the sort of top view you know you had full control of the character moving where you want to go finding the pattern and things for whereas now you're stuck in this over the shoulder camera view it makes the comment more stuff so i understand what he's saying there um, but let me know in the comments below do you prefer this god of horse boss combat or the the newer version i think everybody's going to say the newer version because of the flashiness and the the graphic fidelity you know that's that's come with the game as the innovator because when they went back to God of War in 2018 they innovated the entire play style so they went from this to what we have now which was an innovation not liking the game when I first played it but then leading up to the release of God of War 2018 I decided to play it again now I'm going in knowing that the story is terrible so I'm going in just for the gameplay and because it had been five years I'd actually forgotten a lot of what was in that game so when I played it, it was like rediscovering it, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. The gameplay in that game is solid, classic God of War action, just as good as anything that came before it. So you yes, see, even though the story, God of War Ascension, is trash, it's a better game than God of okay. War 2018 and Ragnarok. I'm all about gameplay. Maybe it's because I'm an old school gamer. My first gaming <laughs> machine was a Sinclair Spectrum. Dude's mug Do you have any idea how that worked? You had to attach a cassette player to the keyboard, and then the keyboard... So basically you just old. <laughs> and then on a white screen, you type load semicolon, and then you hit enter. Okay, now with that being said, everything that we, we've we heard now, everything we've discussed, the points that were raised, at the end of the day, like I always say, no one can tell you what games you should like, what games you should dislike, how to play your games. You know, at the end of the day, you should play what you enjoy right but at the same time you gotta have an open mind you gotta think about things critically um you know and with all this, all this that has been said do you as a viewer think that playstation games the formula that that has been so successful for, for them time and time again is the formula starting to get stale is it starting to get stale are people starting to open their eyes? Are the rose glasses starting to fall off? That they are starting to see that, hey, we don't see much innovation when it comes to um, the gaming elements of the game. Yes, the games look amazing. Yes, the, um, the level of details, the world they build, the stories they tell are amazing. But at the end of the day, PlayStation games feel like they are becoming more cinematic movies than they are actually games. Now, whether or not you agree with that, uh, entirely up to you. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. And at the end of the day, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I love these games. Like I said, gaming is, at the end of the day, I say gaming is the hobby. But I want to know from you guys. Do you think that the, that the PlayStation formula is becoming stale? or not and why you think it's not becoming still or why do you think it is do you think because at the end of the day playstation has built up a brand of good faith with gamers out there but with the current things that they are doing like price hikes you know ps5 slims that comes without the, the vertical stands that came with us you know things like this where you gotta pay so much money to actually play your console that you bought online things like that and then we're getting games like Spider-Man 2 that's only 15 hours. And, and, and I've seen reviews, people saying that they beat the game, they platinum the game with, within 30 hours. And yes, that is fine. You know, not every game needs to be 100 plus hours. But I've got buddies in that too as well that, 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 that are also saying, which is very interesting because they're PlayStation guys. And they're also saying that, hey, given how much games, how expensive games have become, they want more time from the games you know because they're paying so much more from it yet the um the time it takes to beat these games are like only 15 20 hours of that or like 30 hours to platinum in the game yet they are paying so much more extra on the game so that's also another interesting discussion that we can have but what do you think but, but what are your thoughts on that as well um but yeah man uh <laughs> at the end of the day this is a discussion video this is not bashing on playstation it's not bashing on playstation fans i'm a playstation fan as well i'm an xbox fan pc fan at the end of the day gaming is the hobby but the purpose of this channel is so that we can have gaming discussions 
you know, we can have these open-minded discussions. And it's really interesting from previous videos, the discussions that we've had on many things is really, it's, it's really insightful. So I encourage more open discussions like this. But anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Do you think the formula is growing still? My personal opinion, I think to a certain degree, yes, it is. Um, but at the same time, I do enjoy those cinematic, you know, experiences. But I don't want it to completely overtake the gameplay mechanics of the game that it feels more like a movie instead of a game. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I think this movie has gone on far too long. But let me know your thoughts down below. As always, guys, if you want more gaming discussion videos, consider giving this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I do these videos as a hobby, so um, I'm, I'm trying to put out a video at least every week, one or two videos. So I would appreciate um, if you can give this video a thumbs up. Also, I do appreciate the support on the previous videos and the feedback, man. I'm loving it. As always, guys, stay safe out there. I'll catch you on the next video. Whatever, peace.